my name is Steve Gauthier. Um, not a doctor, but thank you. <laughs> um, I'm presenting on behalf of uh, my boss, Dr. Brian Day. We're going to be talking about altering the file, altering file transport as a therapeutic target. And the file that I plan on talking about today is glutathione. Glutathione is a unique critical file that is exclusively used by a large number of repair detoxification pathways. Um, glutathione is an only antioxidant that is more abundant in the airway fluid than in the blood. It is concentrated 100 times higher than that in the blood itself compared to the epithelial fluid. And it is decreased in a number of uh, lung disorders such as cystic fibrosis, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, acute respiratory distress syndrome, syndrome AIDS, lung, and lung transplants. All these disorders are also uh, associated with excess oxidative stress along with COPD, asthma, and chronic borrelia disease. We hypothesized that the induction and the activation of glutathione transport, transporters can help restore epithelial lining fluid glutathione imbalance of the CF lung. We'd like to do this by possibly looking at sulfazalazine and its metabolite, 5 amino salicylic acid. These are both off patent drugs that are used for the treatment of inflammatory bowel disease and rheumatoid arthritis for the past 25 years. Currently, it's only been uh, approved for an oral dose, and yet this mechanism is clearly not understood yet, but thought to be part of the metabolite of 5 amino salicylic sulfazalazine of 5 amino salicylic acid. We'd also like to hope to increase glutathione through uh, phenolic compounds. There are over 8,000 phenolic compounds and polyphenolic compounds produced by plants. There are large sources of these compounds in fruits, vegetables, cereals, nuts, red wines, whiskeys, beers, and teas. It is really hard for our body to actually absorb these uh, compounds due to the microbes in our gut. We have previously shown that sulfazalazine and 5-ASA can selectively transport glutathione to the extracellular. Here we looked at five A, uh, four, A549 cells for a 48-hour treatment of these compounds, and then looked at the extracellular glutathione. We also looked at the intracellular <coughs> fluid with sulfazalazine at one mg per kilogram, and 48 hours looked at the glutathione levels there as well. There are three modes of delivery. There, oh, wrong one. There is oral, inhalation, and injection. As previously mentioned, sulfazalazine and 5 ASA are only approved for oral dose. We are looking at most likely inhalation. Now, of course, mice themselves can't use this, and it's just a, a, a prep slide possibly for us to use. But uh, in order to do this, we need to look at the, via the bioavailability of 5-ASA uh, in, in two different compartments, our plasma and our epithelial lining fluid. At 100 mg per, per kilogram 5-ASA dose to a mouse, the plasma levels at 30 minutes jump up to 275 micromole. At the same time point in epithelial lining fluid, it jumps up to about 40 micromole. Now, since our target lung was our target organ was the lung, inhalation was the easiest means for us to look at. So here I'm looking at basically the plasma levels, but with the inhalation of basically half the dose, 50 mg per kilogram for 5 ASA. And so this dose is somewhat expected, it's half the amount. We get an epithelial lining fluid with half the dose and a direct delivery to the lung, we get twice as much with half the dose of 5 ASA. Five ASA inhibits the proliferation of T cell receptors here. We took CBD patients who actually are chronic beryllium disease patients and have excess uh, have been known to have an excess of uh, inflammation and of, uh, oxidative stress. With the CBD patients and the beryllium sensitized patients, the beryllium sensitized patients uh, are those that have actually been. Exposed to beryllium, but have not developed the full disease itself. 
when we took the, the blood from these samples, we, we isolated the white blood cells and then treated them with beryllium here. As you can see, the proliferation is threefold in the CBD patient and about twofold in the beryllium sensitized patients. When we took those same cells and added 5-ASA, we see a dramatic decrease in both uh, proliferation responses with the, with the cells. Uh, following this, we took the TNF-alpha, which is a typical um, anti-inflammatory or pro-inflammatory marker that we looked at with CBD, treated, treated it with beryllium, and looked at the dose-dependent manner of 5-ASA. And we see that the 5-ASA actually inhibits uh, much of the, about 50% of the uh, TNF-alpha response here. The other part of the project was to look at the phenolic compounds, more specifically 2 prime, 5 prime dihydroxy chalcum. Here we see at low concentrations in three separate epithelial lung cells, we see that the 2 prime, 5 prime hydroxy chalcum can increase glutathione extracellularly in three different cell lines. The most significant finding behind this was the fact that the CF cell lines, the IV3 and the C38, had the increased response in glutathione. It has been reported in the past that the CFTR actually increases or can transport glutathione. And the IV3 actually has a deficient CFTR transport. But the C38 cells are actually IV3 cells that have been stably transfected with a functional CFTR gene. And this is significant because it shows that the glutathione is not going through CFTR and that the 2 prime, 5 prime dihydroxy chalcum can possibly be used as a therapeutic uh, uh, drug for CF patients. In conclusion, glutathione plays a huge critical role as an antioxidant. We have optimized a route for delivery of 5-ASA for the possible treatment of lung disorders and other unmet medical needs. Phenolic compounds such as 2 prime, 5 prime hydroxy chalcone increase glutathione. And increasing these glutathione levels may decrease the severity of some lung disease. I personally would like to thank the state of Colorado and National Jewish for the support, and my colleagues here as well uh, for their support as well.